I turn from selfishness. I turn to you. Help me. Have mercy on me. Show me your salvation. On that cross, there was a great exchange. Isaiah chapter 1 verse 18 says, and this is God talking to you. God sees the situation of the sinner. He sees the condition of your heart. And instead of pouring out upon you what you might deserve, he sends this offer to you. This is God talking to you tonight. God says, come now. Let us reason together, saith the Lord. Though your sins be as scarlet, they shall be as white as snow. Though they be red like crimson, they shall be as wool. He's saying, come unto me. He's calling to you. He's given himself for you. And he says, come be clean. You're carrying that burden for too long. A thing that's weighed you down, that sin that's harmed you, that sin that has done you no good, I'll take that and instead I'll give you my glory. I'll give you my joy. I'll give you my peace. Jesus died in your place so that you could live in his. Jesus gave himself on that cross that you might go free. And God says, come, let us reason. He says, I'm not, I'm not going to punish you. I'm not going to deal with you according to your sins. There's still time for you. He's calling. He's saying, come and let me clean you up. Only the blood of Jesus can clean your conscience. We have excuses. I don't really feel bad about what I do. I don't really think that all this applies to me. You believe what you believe. I believe what I believe. And because I don't really feel what you're telling me, I don't really believe what you're telling me, I'm going to reject what you're saying. Well, the truth is, that truth remains even if all cease to believe it. And that conscience comes back at you and you know in your heart something isn't right. The Bible says, let God be true, but every man a liar. If you're saying you don't feel that in your conscience, you're lying. You're lying to yourself, but you cannot lie to God. You say, well, I'll delay this. Maybe, maybe I'll have some time. Proverbs tells us, don't boast about tomorrow. You don't know what tomorrow holds. My wife and I took a trip up to San Diego. And while we're in San Diego, just maybe a few miles down, we didn't know this till we got back from the weekend, one of her friends had died just a few miles away from where we were. While we were there, just enjoying ourselves in San Diego. Early 20s, he was young. Death can come at any moment. Life is a thin, fragile glass upon which you walk. Once it is shattered, it cannot be repaired. When you stand before God, you'll know you had this opportunity. Don't turn away. I am pleading with you. Don't turn away. Don't harden your heart. The longer you wait to come to the Lord, the more difficult and unlikely it will be that you come to the Lord. You say, well, I don't believe this. Jesus said he'll prove himself to you. Revelation chapter 3 verse 20. This is what Jesus says to you. He says, behold, I stand at the door. And I knock. If any man hear my voice and open the door, I will come into him and will eat with him and he with me. He's saying, all you have to do is open the door. He's saying, well, I got to get this together and that together. And, and I'm not really in a place where I think God can save me. The scripture says his hand is not too short that it cannot save. There's no sin so vile. There's no act so atrocious that God cannot cleanse you from it. 
He's knocking at your door. You're saying, well, I have to get my heart prepared and I have to get things in order. And, and maybe if I adjust the way I'm living and, and wait until I get this job or wait until I go back to church or wait until, and you're delaying the process, you're delaying your salvation, you don't have to do anything but open the door. Just open the door of your heart. Say, okay, Lord, come in and help me and save me and have mercy on me and transform me and he will come in and he will prove himself to you. He'll prove himself to you. Just turn from your sin. You know, salvation really is a miracle. 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 17 says, Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things become new. When you turn from your sin and you turn to Jesus, you'll be completely transformed. You'll be given new desires. You'll be given a new heart. You'll be given a new nature. He doesn't just want to transform your behavior. He wants to transform your nature. You say, I don't really know if I can do it. I want to. But the pleasure of sin has such a grip on me, I can't seem to let it go. Jesus can set you free. All you have to do is open the door. Your conscience is bearing witness against you. And you can try to suppress it all you want, but you know that voice is rising. Jesus wants to save you. Will you come to Jesus tonight? Do you want your conscience to be clean? One of two things are going to happen right now. Either you're going to come and give your heart to Jesus, or you're not. But when you reject this gospel, you're not rejecting me. You're not rejecting a church. You're not rejecting a religion. You're rejecting Jesus himself. You can leave here tonight without having repented, without having turned from your lifestyle that you're living now. When you leave here, you'll get in your car, you'll go home. You'll go back with the people who brought you here so you could hear this message. And you'll say, I should have done what David was telling me to do. I should have given my heart to Jesus. Or, you'll leave here tonight, the burden of sin lifted from your shoulders, a new creation, peace in your mind, joy in your heart, and you'll say, I'm so glad, I'm so glad I gave my heart to Jesus. <laughs> Here's the truth. Here's the truth. When you come to Jesus, the only regret that you'll have is that you didn't do it sooner. I said, when you finally get your heart right, you finally get your life turned around, and you finally turn to Jesus, your only regret will be that you waited so long. Come to Jesus tonight. I'm not promising you a perfect life. In fact, it'll probably get very challenging. People will hate you. You'll be despised. All that wonderful stuff. But you'll have peace. You'll have joy. You'll have purpose. And you'll be free from the weight of sin that binds you. Church, these are lives that are about to be transformed. These are lives that are about to be transformed. Look at this. this I, can, I can go home now. This is, this, is, this is the whole thing right here. May I ask why you're crying? 
natural like it's something in you can't explain it really all these tears up here good to see you Shane come here you feel that this is my friend Shane giving his heart to Jesus tonight. You ever feel anything like this, man? He just shook his head. He said, I've never seen him like this. It's the presence of Jesus. This is the presence of Jesus. He loves you. It'll be a transforming day in your life. I want you to think of the worst thing you've ever done. A lot of people, everyone looked away from me right now. <laughs> After tonight, that's erased from God's record. It's gone. It's clean. It'll be perfectly clean from it. Everything you've ever done wrong, every thought you've ever thought that should not have been thought, Every action, every deed in public and in secret, the blood of Jesus covers it all. Now, it's very important that you hear me on this. Prayer has never in the history of the world saved a single soul. Prayer does not save anyone. Only Jesus saves. Only Jesus saves. This prayer only means something if you do. I'm going to walk you through a prayer right now. But this prayer is not what saves you. You don't find that in the Bible, people praying a prayer. You just find people turning to Jesus and being transformed. But what we're doing here is I'm going to guide you through the process so that you can in your own heart work out these issues with God. I want you to do me a favor. Just close your eyes all across this room. And those of you who are up here, I want you to lift your hands like this. Just like this. Like you're saying, I, I surrender. I give up. I give up. And church, let's pray this with them, okay? Now remember, this prayer doesn't save. Jesus saves. Say, Lord Jesus. I come to you asking for forgiveness. I turn from my sin. I turn from selfishness. I turn to you. Help me. Have mercy on me. Show me your salvation. Save me. Set me free. Make me whole. I'm yours. I give myself to you. All of me. Help me to follow you. The rest of my life. Jesus. I believe you died for my sins. I believe you rose again from the dead. And I believe you live in me by your Holy Spirit. Fill me now. I give you my heart. And I, in Jesus' name, Boldly profess, I belong to Jesus, and I am born again, in Jesus' name, in Jesus' name, amen, amen. Can we do something for a second? I want all of you, turn toward these people. Turn, come on, look at the crowd. 
Can we welcome our new brothers and sisters into the kingdom? Thank you for watching Encounter TV. Don't forget to subscribe. Also, help me win souls by spreading the gospel through events and media. Make a one-time donation or become a monthly supporter by clicking on the donate link now.